Shalom and blessings. Uh, Baruch Shavuot or Shavuot Baruch. I love you all and I hope you all are doing well, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth, children of Yahuwah and the truth. I am going to be starting back up the series on um, Yahuwah's redemptive story. Um, I went back through my videos and I noticed that you guys actually really liked these videos and um, uh I was there was a lot more views on these videos, so I'm going to start this series up again. We are on um, part 25 of Yahuwah's redemptive story. Um, I don't know if that's why some people unsubscribed because I stopped doing this, but I'm going to start it up again. Um, foreign fame, based on 1 Kings 10:1 through 11:8. <clears throat> Solomon's fame spreads far and wide, even to the queen of Sheba. Solomon, Solomon, all I hear are tales of his wealth and wisdom. I'm going to Jerusalem to find out for myself whether the stories are true. The queen sets out in a huge caravan. She has many camels loaded with wealth, wealth, wealth precious spices, piles of gold, and many precious stones. Finally, her, her procession catches sight of Jerusalem. What a beautiful city. It sits on a hill like a glistening crown. Solomon gives the queen a royal welcome. She is awestruck by the luxury of the king's palace. She is, But she quickly tries to test his wisdom with a riddle. What is the most cer certain thing in the world and the most uncertain? The most certain thing in this world is death, but the most uncertain is our share in the world to come. Impressed with his answer, the Queen of Sheba continues to ask Solomon the hardest riddles in her land. He successfully answers all of her puzzles, then takes her for a tour of the city. Solomon shows her the beautiful temple of Yahuwah and the giant marble palaces, and he displays his thousands of fine horses and chariots. Jerusalem has has outgrown its old walls of defense. We're building new ones. That foreman seems to know what he is doing. You're very observant. That is Jeroboam, or Jeroboam, my chief labor foreman. Solomon continues to build what now the people are worried about, or what, but now the people are worried and shocked by what they see. Another temple to the idol of one of the king's foreign ashas or wives, and he uses our taxes to build it. Those heathen temples prove that Solomon is no longer asking Yahuwah for guidance. There's trouble ahead for Yasharal. When her curiosity is satisfied, the queen of Sheba presents Solomon with gifts of gold, rare spices, and precious stones. Then she leaves for home, impressed with his wisdom and wealth. But whereas Solomon had once used his wisdom to help Yahuwah's people, now he uses it to impress foreign leaders and gain even more honor and fame. Um, the next section is From Wisdom to Folly, based on 1 Kings 11, 29 through 43. Trouble is brewing in, brewing in Yasharal. High taxes anger the people. Some even talk of revolt. But... King Solomon refuses to pay attention to any warning signs. One day, as the king, king's labor foreman, Jeroboam, leaves Jerusalem. Jeroboam, stop! I have a message from Yahuwah for you. Ahiyah! A message from Yahuwah? What is it? <clears throat> and why are you t tearing your robe? This is how Solomon's kingdom will be torn apart because he has turned away from Yahuwah. Bella, stop, please. Um, Ahiyah tears the robe into 12 strips. Here, take these 10 pieces. They represent the 10 tribes of Yasharal that you'll rule over when Solomon dies. The other two tribes will be given to Solomon's son so that Yahuwah's promise to, da ta to Dawid will still be fulfilled. Solomon flies into a, to a rage when he hears about Ahiyah's prophecy. 
I made Yerobam a leader, and now he is using his position to turn people against me. Find him and kill him. But friends warn Yerobam, and he escapes into Mitzrayim, or Egypt. I'll stay here until Solomon dies. Then we'll see if Ahiah spoke the truth about my ruling the northern tribes of Yasharal. Reports of your people's complaints have been reaching us from for some time. But Solomon continues to live in luxury and so far removed from his people that their complaints do not reach him. He even ignores Ahiah's prophecy and Yahuwah's warning that the kingdom will be divided because he worships false Allahims or false idols. At, at last, Solomon even joins his foreign ashas or foreign wives in their worship of heathen idols. Please pray to me, Yahuwah with me. Please, please pray to my Yahuwah with me, Solomon. It would please me so much. It can't hurt anything. I still pray every day to, to the Allahim of Yasharal. Where the king goes, the people follow. Many of the Yashraelites start worshipping idols. No, co no country that turns away from Yahuwah can remain strong and free. Yasharal is doomed. Eventually, Solomon dies. With Yahuwah's help, he had built Yasharal into a strong nation. But in his greed for more wealth and power, he turned away from Yahuwah, and, Dawid, and Dawid's once mighty kingdom will now crumble. That looks like... Um, I can't remember. Um, that looks like Baal, the one that where they uh, they sacrificed children to uh, this monument, false idol, false deity. Okay, a kingdom torn in two. Yes, I know. I. All right, so um, I believe we're at a kingdom torn in two based on 1 Kings 12, 1 through 24. Now that King Solomon has died, his son Rehoboam Boom, Rehoboam has gone to Shechem to be crowned king of all Yasharal. The northern tri tribes of Yasharal have brought their leader, Yeroboam, back from his exile in Mitzrayim or Egypt to plead their case before the new king. Your father forced us to pay heavy taxes and work hard on his building projects. We cannot continue to carry such burdens. Lighten our load and we will, be, we will serve you faithfully. But come back in three days. Come back in three days and I will give you my answer. Rehoboam Boom con consults his ad advisors. The older men tell him to heed the cries of his people, but his young friends, if you give in to their demands, they will think you are weak. You need to prove to them that you'll be even tougher than your father. Three days later, the people return for the king's answer, but they are disappointed. My father made your yoke heavy. I'll make it heavier. My father whipped you. I'll whip you with scorpions. Then, then we do not need you to rule us because... Just because King Dawid was your grandfather doesn't make you our king. When we're done with you, you'll be lucky to rule over your own house. Rehoboam's arrogant words spark the rebellion Yahuwah promised. Just as the prophet Aliyah had said, or Ahiyah had said, ten tribes of Yasharal break from the kingdom and make Yeroboam their king. In fear for his life, Rehoboam, or Rehoboam, races back to Jerusalem and the tribe of Judah or Yehuda that remains loyal to him. In Jerusalem, Rehoboam calls up his army to fight against the northern tribes that have revolted. The men are ready for your order, sire. Good, I'll speak to them right away. Wait! This is a message from Yahuwah to the king of Yehuda and all his people. Why didn't he refer to me as the king of Yasharal? It is Yahuwah's will that the country be divided at this time. You men of Yehuda should not fight your brothers of Yasharal. All of you go back to your own homes. Who is this man trying to give us orders? He's Shemaiah, a prophet of Yahuwah. 
I, for one, will not disobey orders from Yahuwah. The army breaks up and goes home. The twelve tribes which have been united under the kingships of Saul, Dawid, and Solomon are now split between the northern tribes of Yasharal and the southern tribe of Yehuda. As a final embarrassment to Rehoboam, or Rehoboam the Egyptian or Mitzrayim pharaoh Shishak, Yeroboam's ally, raids Solomon's beautiful temple and steals all the fine gold and riches. In shame, Rehoboam places the fixtures with bronze. Replaces them with bronze. <coughs> A bad start for Yasharal, based on 1 Kings 12.25-14.20. through 14, 20. Yeroboam has been made king over the northern tribes known as Yasharal, and King Rehoboam rules the southern kingdom of Yehuda. Unfortunately for Yer Yeroboam, the, the Kodesh temple of his people is not in Yasharal, it's in Yehuda. King Yeroboam, do you know that all people still go to Jerusalem to worship in the temple? I know, as long as they still go to Yehuda to worship, they will still have some allegiance to, other, to the other kingdom. I don't want my subjects to have split loyalties, like double-mindedness, which Yehuda doesn't want us to have. A double-minded man cannot survive. That gives me an idea. They only go to Jerusalem because there is no temple here. To keep the people from worshipping in Yehuda, Yeroboam makes two golden calves. When our people escaped from Mitzrayim or Egypt years ago, they worshipped this Allahim. Worship it now and you won't have to make the, make the long trip to Jerusalem. A golden calf again. Worshipping of idols. Although Yeroboam has, was chosen by Yahuwah, his idol worship wasn't. A man of Yahuwah from, from Yehuda comes to, Be to Bethel to prophesy against Yeroboam. As an insult to the king, he gives his prophecy directly to the symbol of the king's blasphemy. On Kodesh, or, or unholy altar, a king descended from Dawid will shatter you and execute your unholy or unkodesh priests. As a sign of the power of the Adoni, you will now break in two pieces. Seize him! But the power of the Adoni withers Yeroboam's hand before he can draw it back. I'm sorry, please ask Yahuwah to heal me. Very well, you are healed, but know that Yahuwah has turned his back on you and your family because you have set up altars in the high places. After being healed, Yeroboam rules for many years uneventfully. He hopes that maybe Yahuwah's anger has abated, but then one day, Our son is very ill, Yeroboam. I'm worried. So am I, if only I knew. But none of Yahuwah's prophets will speak to me anymore. Ahiah the prophet. Ahiah the prophet. He told me I would be king. He knows what will happen. Disguise yourself so that he won't recognize you and see if you can get him to prophesy about our son. Immediately the queen disguises, her, disguises herself and sets out for Ahiyah's house. But as she steps through the door, I am blind, but Yahuwah has told me who you are and why you've come. Yahuwah gave his favor to your husband and made him king. Yeroboam used, used that power to do evil, and evil will come to him. His child will die, and one day the people of Yasharal will be conquered and scattered in, in other lands because they have worshipped idols. The first part of Ahiah's prophecy comes true right away. When the queen gets home, she finds her son dead. But Yeroboam is not wise enough to heed this warning. He continues to lead his people in idol worship, and Yasharal never returns to the pure worship of the Adoni. As a result, the king of Yasharal... The kings of Yasharal are plagued by war, bloodshed, and assassination. For 40 years, each king is more evil than the one before him. Then King Ahab er, comes to the throne, and he is even worse. Next time... 
Or Yahuwah's Redemptive Story, we will be reading The Wicked Queen and the Defiant Prophet. Um, Eliyah's Flower Power. Battle of the Allahims. And The Sound of Silence. Um, I wanted to add that um, I did put up a post about this. Um, I am going to be offering um, for people that subscribe as, um, like, I have a PayPal donation account, but um, if people subscribe for a month's subscription, um, you will be provided my number and we can do video calls um, and we can do um, uh, scripture readings and studies together and um, we can talk about our lives. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Children of you who are in the truth. Toda Rabba Abba Yahuwah Toda Rabba Abba Yahuwah Baruch Abba Vashem Yahuwah Hallelujah, hallelujah, Hua. I love you, Abba, Abba, Yahua. I love you all, warriors of you, children of you who are in the truth, and you parent warriors of you who are in the truth. I love you all. Shalom and blessings.